All right, so today we're going to start you guys off with getting registered with Gmetrics. Gmetrics is a piece of software that will assist you guys in preparing for the actual industry certification exam. In order to take the actual industry certification exam, you have to pass the pretest at 80% or better. So there will be a series of practice tests that you guys are going to take within Gmetrics that will prepare you for the pretest. You will then take the pretest, which will then open up that window or close that door for you, whichever way, whichever side you land on. Um, you'll then start preparing for the actual industry certification exam. For those who do not pass that 80% threshold, you will then be given additional projects that will kind of enrich and fill in those learn those those knowledge gaps that you have for the test, um, and that will pretty much take us out for the most part through the rest of the year. So let's get started, right? So this is third period. So in my learning where you've landed on day one, Gmetrics and certification exam, pretty much everything I just said is right there, uh, but we need to register. So make sure that you're clicking on third period. After you click on third period, please stop. Make sure that you are in fact looking at the school year 2023 third period only page. You guys don't have it? All right, hold on. There we go. Hit refresh. There you go. I, yeah, I don't know why that wasn't published, but it's published, so you should have it now. Okay. Um, all right, scroll down to the bottom. This is third period. Uh, if you are watching this video, uh, then you will obviously go to your respective period. Please make sure that you are clicking on your respective period, the period that you are in, because that's how where your grade will fall. Okay. All right, so you'll see there is a link, register with Gmetrics. So regardless of what period you're in, you're going to click here. And then you're going to go ahead and fill this information. For the email address, do not use a school email address. Don't put your student ID number at student.pasco.k12.fl.us. If you lose your password or have to reset it, they're, they're not going to be able to send you that email. That email will not get through the filter. So use a personal email. Use an email that you use on a regular basis or that you have access to. Okay, so fill this out as if you would do a regular legal document. First name, last name, United States, Florida, student number. Go ahead and put your student number in there. Again, use a personal email address. If you don't have a personal email address, let me know so we can figure that out. Your username. Use your student's ID number as your username. If it will not let you use your student ID number, then simply add your initials to the end of your student ID number. So for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, FW, that would be my initials, right? So again, for username, use your student ID number. For the password, use your My Pasco Connect password. Like, well, why not? It's you use it every day. I doubt that you'll forget it. And then fill out the security question and answer. Once you finish filling it out, it's going to ask you to log in. Go ahead and log in. To G metrics and then your screen will probably look something like this so again once you've logged in it's going to ask you for that access code depending on what period you're in you're going to go ahead and place that access code so this is obviously period three if you're watching this video and you're in another period make sure that you're going to your respective period and using that access code otherwise I will not be able to grade your, your tests, and you're, you're just going to receive zeros. So please make sure that you're using the correct access code for your respective period. All right, so once you type in that access code, um, that's going to put you in the course. I believe you guys will see something along the lines of something like this, yes? Right? Uh, obviously, I have something more, but you should have the... Adobe CC 2018, 2019, 2020. 
this is where we're going to stop for today. So you are in the course. You are where you need to be. What I want to do now is talk about how we're going to actually use Gmetrics to prepare us. So I would strongly recommend that you watch my projection screen as I kind of walk you through what these things are going to look like. So there are two types of tests in Gmetrics. You have, you have the test, but within that test you have a training mode and then you have a testing mode. The training mode will, will let you know whether or not you selected the correct response or did the task correctly. Um, and, then it, and then if you didn't, it will tell you what the correct response is supposed to be. That's as you go. The testing mode is not going to let you know whether or not you got it right or wrong. It will at the end, right, it will let you know what you got wrong at the end, uh, but it won't give you the correct responses. Now, here's, here's the key to this. In preparing for this test, it's not about parroting what the correct response to all of these questions are, right? You guys know what a parrot is, right? Oh, it's a cracker, right? That bird has no idea what he's saying, right? Uh, he doesn't have any grasp of what the English language is, but he's just mimicking those sounds, okay? So I don't want you guys to be parrots. I have had people who have gone through this process who were parrots. They scored a thousand percent on the on the pretest, and they went into the injury certification exam and bombed it. In fact, struggled even passing it altogether at all, because all they did was memorize what the correct responses to these questions were. You can do that, but you're not going to pass the injury certification exam. So I'm going to walk you through how you will study for this test, not just today, but in the future as well. So again, once you go into this test, um, what's really in so I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. So my pass rate for the pretest is probably somewhere around 60 to 70%, somewhere around in there. For those who go on to take the actual indie certification exam, the pass rate is about 96 to 98%. Okay, But it is a process. It's a process that you have to engage in. I can't drag you through. I mean, I can drag you through the mud, but you're not going to pass. You're just going to be filthy with mud. No mud, I'm not dragging you anywhere. Right. Now we're moving. If you go through the process, you'll pass. Okay, it's, it's really that easy. It really is that easy. I have two people here that pass. Am I correct, Connor? Dylan, right? Like if you go through the process, you will pass. Okay. Um, so this is what will happen. Now, this year, unlike other years, you guys have more resources as it relates to the preparation, not just for the practice test, but for the actual industry certification exam as well. And that is once you go in, so over on the left here, right on the left, you'll see that there is a study guide. You, if you want, you can go ahead and follow along with me. So there's the study, study guide. You should see where it says Photoshop. So before we, so we'll start our first practice test tomorrow. So before we even get there, you can actually come in here and look at the topics. Now these topics are mirrored to the exact industry certification exam. Not the same questions. You will not see the same questions, but you will see questions that are very similar in nature to these topics. And so you can drill into each one of these topics and you'll see so working in the in, uh, design industry, right? So we'll, we'll walk through them together. Identify the purpose, audience, Audience needs in preparing images. We've covered that. In fact, you'll as we go through this, you'll see we've probably covered 90% of what's on the test. Gmetrics will fill in what, what we haven't covered. And, and we may have covered it very loosely, but I wouldn't categorize it as being covered. All right, so identifying the purpose, audience, and audience needs for preparing images. 1.2, communicate with colleagues and clients about design plans. We've, eh, kind of, but not really. Right, we're, we're going to fill in those gaps in the, in the upcoming weeks. Determine the type of copyright permissions and licensing required to use for specific content. Yes, we've covered that. Demonstrate knowledge of key terminology related to digital images. Yes, we've covered that. Demonstrate knowledge of basic design principles and best practices employed in the design industry. Yes, we've covered that. Topic two, project setup and interface. Create a document with the appropriate settings for web, print, and video. Yes. Navigate, organize, and customize the application workspace. Yes. Use non-printing design tools and an interface to aid in design or workflow. Yes. Probably 
wouldn't be able to tell me what that is, but as we get into it, you'll see, oh, yeah, we did cover that. Import assets into a project, yes. Manage colors, swatches, and gradients, yes. Manage brushes, symbols, styles, and patterns, yes. Number three, organize documents. Use layers to manage design elements, yes. Modify layer visibility using opacity, blending modes, and masks, yes. Understand the differences between destructive and non-destructive edits, yes. Number four, like, just by going through these lists, you should, you should start to feel like, yeah, we covered this stuff. And if you've been engaged, you're, you're, you're going to be fine. Even if you haven't been engaged, maybe today's the first day like you wake up. <gasps> that first breath of des digital design, fresh air, right? Like, I'll get you through there, but you have to work the process. Four, use core tools and features to create visual elements. Yes, add and manipulate text using appropriate typographic settings. Yes. Make, manage, and manipulate selections. Yes. Transform digital graphic and media. Yes. Use basic reconstruction and retouching techniques to manipulate digital graphics and media. Yes. Modify the appear appearance of design elements by using filters and styles. Yes. Lastly, publishing digital media. Prepare images for export to web, print, video. Yes. Ish. Yes. Ish. We'll fill in those gaps. Export or save digital medias to various file formats. Yes. Ish. We've covered it, but we haven't like really gotten our hands dirty with it. Okay, so those are those five topics that you are, you're going to be tested on, not just these practice tests, but also the pre-test and most certainly the actual um, image certification exam. Okay, now what's really neat about this is as once you take that first practice test, you'll start to see uh, these these statistical points of this page start to fill in. Right? And then you'll be able to identify the areas that you need help in. But again, you have to be on, truly honest with yourself on whether you're parroting those responses. Like, oh, I remember question three, it was B. Yeah. But do you know why it was B? Do you know what was related to those other responses? Like, can, can you identify those other A, B, and D and tell me what those things are and what they mean? And if the answer is no, then you're not understanding the concept here. So again, it's not about the specific question. It is, but it's not about the specific question. It's more about what are those other ancillary elements or things that they're asking about or, or asking you to consider. It's even more important to know why those are not the correct answer versus why they are why C was the correct answer. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If it doesn't, we'll get there because we're going to talk about this throughout the next couple weeks. Right. But again, all of this is broken down here statistically for you, so you can hone in on those areas that you need the most help on, and then you can isolate those elements and then really start to study. Okay, I, I, former classes didn't have the access to this information, so you guys are off to a much better start than they are. Okay, but all that stuff is there, and it will start to populate uh, after tomorrow when we start the test. All right, the only other thing is. This will be the last, well, other than studying, which I believe you can do this. So there's two ways to log in. There's the online version, which is where you guys are now. And then there's the actual app that you guys will use. So there's an app that's installed on the computer. It's called VMX. I'll show you it tomorrow. Uh, but in short, you will go through that app, and then you will log into that app, and then that's where you'll take the actual test. You can access the tests online, but it, it, what will happen is it's going to take you to the app that you have to then log into, and so we'll just cut the middleman out. So, But nonetheless, um, you can download that app at home. Uh, you can log in from home, so you can study and work on these tests as well from home. Um, again, the more work you put into it, the, the better off you're going to be in passing the certification exam. So now, next, the next thing is, is like, why the heck? Should I attempt to pass this image certification exam? Well, it is. It could very well help you. Uh, I don't know of many industries where communicating visually is not used, right? Like, in so this image certification exam is called or the test is actually called Adobe Certified Associate in Visual Communications using Adobe Photoshop. So it goes beyond just Photoshop, right? So if you can attach this to your resume. You're showing a potential employer, you're showing a potential school or trade university, right? Uh, a potential um, 
scholarship that you're applying for, that you've put in the work to show that you, that you can pass an actual industry certification exam. These are exams that adults try to acquire so that they can show that they're proficient in that skill set. So this, this is an amazing opportunity that we pay for you guys to take the test and be able to attach that to your resume, um, which I've had students who've come back to me and said they got that scholarship or they got into the school simply because they were on the fence and because they had that certification, the school took a chance on them or, the, or they got that scholarship. So um, true stories, it will help you. Um, it is it's a good thing for you if you pass it. So we'll leave that there. Tomorrow uh, we'll get you guys started with your first uh, practice test.